If you're looking for a three-row luxury SUV and you have between $52,250 and $76,300 to spend, you might be checking out something like this. This is the refreshed 2025 Acura MDX. Does it have what it takes to stay on top of things because it's the best seller now? Will it be the best seller in the future? Let's take a look around and find out. Now, if you wanna know how this drives, you do have to wait a little bit because I can't talk about how this one drives, but we can talk about just about everything else. This is the top end Type S model. Model. So this one is the $76,300 model. Uh, it actually is running right now. The engine is really quiet. It's one of the nice things I like about the MDX. We get V6 engines under the hood, not turbocharged four-cylinder engines like we find in so many of the competition, and their engines are all really smooth. Now, the front-end design, it has changed a bit for 2025. So you'll notice that the grille elements are a little bit different. The grille openings have been tweaked very slightly. We get very similar headlights to before, but they're a little bit darker than in the past. So the same multi-module design, the same chicane turn signals are here, but the plastic housing has been darkened a bit. There are two different looks to the front bumper. If you get the Type S or the A-Spec, we get these auxiliary grills here on the side. The fog lights below, those are optional. If you get the rest of the MDX lineup, then we get more of a clean bumper front look. Uh, and if you get the top end advanced trim, then you can get uh, body colored moldings around the car. So these black moldings, those become body colored if you get the advanced trim without Type S and without A-Spec. There are a bunch of different ways you can configure your MDX. That's quite logical because of how many they sell. We of course get new wheels and tires, except for the base model. Those are basically the same as before, but over here we have the new 21 inch wheels that are in the Type S, big Brembo brakes. The Type S gets upsized brakes. We also get the only adaptive air suspension offered in the MDX. I am a little bit sad that that did not work its way down to the regular advanced trim of the MDX. So if you want the best ride quality, you're still gonna want to get the top end model like this. I'm also a little bit surprised that the Type S is not offered with those same body colored moldings that you get in the advanced trim. Now, in addition to the adaptive air suspension, we also get slightly tweaked suspension components all the way around. So it definitely rides differently uh, than the non Type S model. If you wanna know how it drives, basically check out our previous videos. You can get an idea. Things have been tweaked, but it's pretty similar. Now, moving around to the back, again, smoked tail lights back here, similar to the smoked headlights up front, very familiar design. Same quad exhaust tips going on down there on the bottom. And again, if you don't like all of the shiny black plastic trim around, you could get the advanced trim. Now let's dive under the hood because this is definitely one reason to choose the MDX over the competition. Since this is the Type S, we have a single turbo three liter V6 under this hood producing 355 horsepower. But if you're not a fan of turbos or small displacement four cylinders, check out the MDX because this is not the only option. If you get every other version of MDX, there's a natural aspirated three and a half liter V6 under this hood, producing just under 300 horsepower. This is one of the very few luxury vehicles available in North America with a naturally aspirated V6 engine under the hood. Both engines are mated to a standard 10-speed automatic transmission. If you get the base V6, you can still get front-wheel drive, but if you work your way up to the top end of the trim ladder, all-wheel drive becomes standard, and if you choose the Type S, all-wheel drive is always standard. That's quite logical, because you wouldn't really want 355 horsepower and 354 pound-feet of torque happening just on the front wheels. Now let's go ahead and take a look inside. I'll go ahead and hop in and first start up the engine right there. Keyless go with the start button that turns red as the car starts, kind of a nice touch. Immediately, the first thing you're gonna notice in here is the new infotainment screen. It is significantly closer to the driver. You can see that's where the uh, dashboard where it was previously. Significantly closer, and it now features Google integration and a touch screen. Yep, no more silly controller going on down here lower on the dashboard. That was one of my least favorite input methods, and it has finally been excised from the car. Other than that, the bulk of the dashboard looks pretty much the same. This model has wood trim, something that we don't find in the Lexus TX, which is definitely in this segment. Although we still have plenty of shiny black plastic, which I think is gonna scratch pretty easily. It's worth noting that every MDX we've had in for longer term review has had fine scratches all over the shiny black plastic. So if you're worried about that, you might wanna think twice about it or maybe try and find some sort of protective layer. The other change you're gonna notice is that we now have Bang & Olufsen audio systems here. You can see the Bang & Olufsen logo on those very distinctive tweeters. And then of course down there on the mid-range speakers on the front doors. I was really surprised by this because 
Acura has been all in on the Panasonic ELS systems, and this is a pretty big change for Acura to go over to Bang & Olufsen. Logically, they did it because a lot of luxury shoppers are after Bang & Olufsen audio components, and Acura says that the sound is superior to the systems they were using before. As you can see, lots of soft touch materials in the upper section and lower section of the dashboard. I really like the general design in the MDX. Let me know what you think about that. If you love buttons, you're really going to like this over a lot of the options that are really heavy on the touchscreen. So lots of physical buttons over here for the climate control, the heated and ventilated seats, even a button for the front seat massage, which I'm definitely going to talk about here in a bit. Uh, auto brake hold, the hunt and peck shifter, that's still going on there. Lots of storage in the center console area. We also find a much larger wireless phone charging mat. But oddly enough, there's not a lot of storage going on in this center console area. For a vehicle that is front wheel drive based, there is a surprisingly limited amount of storage space here. So if I lift this up, this storage well is only maybe about five inches or six inches deep or so. So you definitely find more center console storage area in some of the competition. Now, moving over to the seat designs, we find Shoulder belts that are adjustable for the driver and front passenger, four-way adjustable headrests there, and this very distinctive style to the seats. You can get this in this two-tone black and sort of ivory seat design. There's also a very attractive blue seat, which doesn't show up on camera very well, but looks great in person. And then it, depending on the trim you're in, you can also get sort of a baseball glove brown interior. Moving all the way over to the steering wheel here, it's basically the same design as before, but it now features a touch capacitive function to it. So instead of having to wiggle the steering wheel when you're in the lane centering mode, it will know that your hand is right there on the steering wheel because it can actually sense your hand's presence. Other interesting change is that we have the same full color LCD cluster as before, but now we have Google mapping right there in the center that's being driven, of course, by the Google mapping right here in this system. Unfortunately, it will not let you repeat information from your smartphone. So if you have navigation via Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you're just gonna get arrows there. You're not gonna get a moving map display. Now, moving out from here, we have a three position memory for the driver and front passenger seat in this trim. And the seat itself is kind of a unique design, something that we haven't found in some of the Japanese luxury competition before, because this offers front seat massage. It's actually one of the best massages in this segment. Power extending thigh cushion. We also get inflatable bolsters, that four way adjustable headrest. And the passenger seat has the same range of motion as the driver's seat. These seats are significantly more adjustable, and I would say significantly more comfortable than the ones we find in the Lexus TX. Let's check out the back seat. There is Travis hiding out back there in the second row, trying to stay cool. Uh, right next to him actually is one of the big features in the MDX, and that is this removable and foldable center console. So uh, the, yeah, the webbing's right over there. So you can flip that up, seven passenger capacity in every trim, including this Type S, or you can remove it for something similar to a captain's chair vibe. Uh, one nice touch is that we still have latch anchors in the center seat position. Center latch anchors are pretty rare in the US. I love the fact that this car has three of them. Although I kind of wish that there was a feature that we don't find. Actually, go ahead and fold that again, Travis. Uh, and then uh, we'll pull this webbing over here to remove that from the car. If I go in for a look, you'll notice we still have these latch anchor posts here in the floor. Uh, there's nothing to cover that. There's no rubber insert, etc. I have a family friend that has one of these and has young kids, and the kids keep tripping over those little latches. So I like the fact that this is removable and stowable when you don't want it, uh, but it does mean a little bit of loss of practicality if you're worried about uh, people tripping over that. Of course, getting into the third row, you can tilt and slide those seats forward right like that. I'm just going to go ahead and hop into the back seat. Uh, and then uh, you can see how I fit behind Travis. I actually have just a little bit of leg room there. My knees are not quite touching the seat, but they're really, really close, maybe a millimeter away or so. Uh, the big problem back here is really just headroom. There's not a lot of that going on in the back of the MDX, and that's because of that sloping rear profile. If you want more rear seat room, especially more rear seat headroom, you want to check out the Lexus TX. The rear roof line does not slope as much as we find in the MDX. It slopes a little bit more than the Grand Highlander, but it's not as big of a drop as we find here. 
Of course, most folks are probably gonna have the third row folded most of the time, which is why we find carpet siding back here in the third row area and hard plastic around things like the cup holder area. We do have USB charge ports, which is nice. And again, lots and lots of speakers back here. This is the over 30 speaker audio system. So speakers there, speakers up here in the ceiling, speakers over there by Travis's head, and then speakers up there in the front ceiling as well. Then we have this really big panoramic moonroof above everything. Acura still gives us nicely integrated sunshades in the back, a feature that is for some reason missing in a decent number of luxury vehicles. If I pop open the power hatch, we don't find quite as much cargo capacity as we find in the Lexus TX. 22 inch roller bags like that can sit horizontally and you can put two of them back here, but you couldn't stand them up and still close the hatch. That's just a little bit too large. Again, of course, most people are going to have these seats folded most of the time. Let's see if I can do that while holding the camera at the same time pop that down one-handed not a problem uh, because these are not powered third row seats that's actually my preference because I think it's faster to lift them up and down and then that does give you a cargo area that is completely flat with the regular load floor so you can just push your luggage right on in there quite easily now there's no change to the small amount of underfloor storage here because the spare tire in the mdx actually happens under that area but hey presto there is no spare tire in this one because the type s does not get one you'll find a spare tire in every other model that's because of the wheel and tire package these are 21 inch wheels wrapped in 275 with tire and that was just a bit too big to fit back there in the spare tire well under everything so they decided to give this uh, not run flat tires but self-sealing tires so these ride better than run flats and if you get a puncture they will still lose air pressure but they hopefully should reseal themselves and then you just pump them up with even more air let us know down there what you think of the refreshed MDX. Did Acura do enough? Should they have done a bit more? I think as far as styling and content goes, Acura did exactly what they needed to do with this model. But I do wish if I had just one thing that I could change on the MDX, I would love to see a resurrection of the Acura 3 liter hybrid system that we used to find in the MDX once upon a time. It has been a while since that system was offered in an MDX, but it did deliver over 300 horsepower and a solid fuel economy improvement. Movement. That is the one knock on the MDX. On the Type S, you'll get 19 miles per gallon combined. The most efficient version is just over 20 miles per gallon. I think it's 22 in the front wheel drive version. And you will find significantly better fuel economy in something like the XC90, especially with the recharge version. And then of course the Lexus TX has not just one, but two different hybrid systems available in that model. So which one is right for you? It's gonna depend on your priorities. Do you want the better driving option? Do you want the more fuel efficient option? We'd love to hear all of your thoughts down there in the comments section below. And of course, stay tuned when we can actually talk about how the MDX drives. See all of you later.